Hi, today we're going to be looking at the I2C Long Distance Differential Extender Board by SJT Bits. This is a device that allows you to extend the range of the I2C protocol out to uh, literally 50 plus feet, sometimes even 100 feet depending on the wire. The I2C protocol was originally developed by Philips, although in the 1990s we started seeing other manufacturers to start using this protocol in their devices and support supporting it in their chips. The protocol is basically made up of two lines, a data line and a clock line. The I2C protocol is generally limited by a 400 uh, picofarad capacitance limitation, and this board will lift that uh, limitation of capacitance and also uh, break the signals out into a differential pair. All right, so here I have um, a little I2C bus set up, and I'm using the Blink M uh, LED uh, system by, I think it's called Thing M. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I have a USB dongle here, which is USB to I2C bus. We have the data line and the clock line coming out here in these yellow wires, and I have a, a ground, a common ground shared with my uh, dev board. I've gone ahead and run these, uh, this clock and data line into one of the I2C to differential converter boards, and then I have power running into the board and then I have the differential bus running to the secondary board where I have one of the Blink M's I2C bus tied in. So here's the Blink M here. It's really important when you're wiring up one of these I2C to differential boards to take a look at this wiring diagram that SJT Bits provides. Uh, if you flip over the I2C to differential board, you'll notice that uh, each one of the set of IO lines is labeled either P1 or P2, and those correspond to ports, either port 1 or port 2 of the differential signaling coming out. And for the master I2C bus, it always has to uh, be connected to the rest of the bus through port 1, and there's a special wiring uh, diagram that they give you for connecting the master to the rest of the bus. And then once you start connecting slaves together, it's always port 2 to port 1, port 2 to port 1, and those continue out. And I've gone ahead and, and done the initial wiring here. Again, I have my master I2C differential right here, and I have my slave right here, and I follow the wiring diagram as specified on their documentation page. All right, so here I have a, another I2C to differential uh, board and I've gone ahead and wired it um, as a slave device on, this is actually here, port one as specified. And I'm gonna be passing in data through this 150 foot uh, Cat5 cable cut. And I'm gonna be passing our data to this Blink M uh, little LED here. All right, so we've gone ahead and wired up port two to port one, so port two of the slave to port one of the slave. And again, this is gonna be the master. This device here is acting as a master, and so we're transmitting from the master to a slave, from that slave back out to the next slave. We've got an I2C to differential device here in our Blink M, and another I2C to differential device right here. I'll actually move these wires so you can see it a little bit better in this Blink M here. And uh, we have our differential pair running between these two over about 150 feet of Cat5 that's unshielded. Okay, and we're gonna turn on the power now. And you see that both of the devices have powered on. They're now uh, just waiting for their program. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, scan the I2C bus. And we see that one of our devices is on uh, port two, or I2C, um, I'm sorry, uh, I2C device two and we see that one's on nine, so we'll go ahead and set up uh, a nine, and we'll set up a two. And then we'll go ahead and give uh, two some, I don't know, pink color, and the other one on nine, we'll give some yellow color. And we'll go ahead and we'll play this. Okay, so pink, and kind of yellowish color, green. All right, so now what we're doing is we're taking the I2C bus, and we're extending it over 150 feet um, of Cat5.